Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, I'm Ange. And today is gonna be a hopefully fast wrap up of what I read in September. September was fantastic. I read 13 and a half books, which is the best amount of reading I have ever done, ever. Way beyond my expectations. I did not expect to read that many books and I am pumped about it. I'm gonna break this up a little bit because I read quite a bit of series in this. So I'm gonna talk about the first five um, to start with. And this is books or volumes two, three, four, and five and six of Dengeki Daisy by Kiyosuke Motomi, I believe is who it is. Guys, this manga. Thank you, Elsa, from the French Book Dreamer for getting me hooked on this because I absolutely love it. I have been checking these out from my public library and I'm so happy that they have this because there's 14 in the set at my library, so I'm not even halfway through it technically. And they are just so easy to fly through. I read them in like an hour, hour and a half. They're so good. I seriously love them. I can't put them down. It's about this this young girl, Her she's 16, her brother died and left her with this phone with this mysterious character that she could talk to and kind of who would give her comfort um, in the time of his death and just like whatever she needed with the name Daisy. So at school, she is in like, society, like in a student council type stuff. And she ends up having to work for the custodian who is like 20, 22. It's her brother's age, whatever her brother's age is. And they both start to like fall for each other, but they don't acknowledge it. And also he's hiding some secrets it's just it's really good i can't really give much away because it's like the whole series what what it's about but basically daisy might be closer to her than what she knows and daisy is also a hacker it's a great series i absolutely love it i've never read manga before this is my first manga series and it's i actually really really enjoy reading the physical copies i thought for sure that i would be a little more intimidated by that because you read back to front and then like right to left. So I had to get used to it, um, but I really enjoyed it. So I gave, I've given most of them four stars. There was one that I gave three stars, but for the majority, I give them four stars because they're just so good. Let's go to the next series, which was the Zodiac Academy. So I read four and a half for this book. I read books one, two, three, four, and then book one again in a different POV. So the first book is called The Awakening and it's about these twins. They are Gemini twins. Also the Zodiac Academy is full of astrology. Everything is astrological and relies on the stars and stuff like that. Anyway, there are these twins in the mortal world and they get brought to this mirror world called Solaris where they are actually the lost air princesses. An air as in like reigning heirs, H-E-I-R. They find out that they have powers. Um, they go to, they're now going to a magical school, which is elemental magic. So fire, earth, water, air. And also everybody at the school has order forms. So people not only have these magics that they can wield with their hands, but they can turn into werewolves, sirens, vampires, dragons, um, cerebuses, sphinxes, etc., etc. So many different things, harpies which is super cool. And there are these other heirs. There are four male heirs who were actually raised to become the next rulers because they had thought that the princesses were dead when they died with their parents 20 years ago, but that didn't actually happen. So everybody's just in for a rude awakening. They are fey and it's a very bullying, it's like a fey eat fey world. And so you have to be powerful and to be powerful, you have to like overcome everybody else. And so there's a lot of bullying. If bullying triggers you, don't read the series. I almost had to put the first book down. I just, it's, it's bad. But if it doesn't bother you as much, you can push through the first half of the first book and it gets a little bit better. The second book is called Ruthless Fae. The third book is called the Reckoning and the fourth book is called Shadow Princess. So there's a lot of really cool stuff. Um, the magic is really interesting. The orders are really interesting. There are some interesting romantic characters or like partnerships, whatever. I really like 
a lot of the characters, but there's a lot that I don't like. Um, I had some issues with the first two books. I won't go into them. I would probably give them each about three and a half stars, but I ended up rating them on Goodreads as a four star. I always round up. But the storyline in book three and four got really good. So I enjoyed it a lot more. And then book four, the, the one that I'm currently reading is The Awakening. So the first book, but in the boys perspective, there's five different guys. So it's the heirs plus one more person. If you read this series, you don't need to read this book. Like you don't. It's just a lot of useless information. There's nothing new. There's nothing interesting. It's, it's a lot of just like typical what you would expect a guy to be thinking about thoughts. Got those out of the way. So that was in itself almost 10 books. <laughs> so those are gone. I'm glad I could try to get through that fast. Okay, so now the rest. Um, the first of the rest that I read was The Wings of Fire, the graphic novel. Um, the first book, which is The Dragonette Prophecy. I loved this. I had to read this for class. I didn't have to, I chose to read it for my class. We were supposed to choose a graphic novel or a children's book of our choice. And my niece loves this series. So I wanted to get in on it and kind of see what her excitement was all about. And I really enjoyed it. The graphics themselves are really cool. I really, really like it. It's about these five, she, okay. First of all, there's this Dragonette Prophecy. That's what the first book is called. But she can, she can recite the prophecy, which is really cute. <laughs> And it's funny. Um, but it's about these five dragonettes who are supposed to, are prophesized to end the war on dragons. So the dragon tribes are like fighting each other and they are prophesied to end it. And it's just, it's really cute. I just, I love, I love these. Graphic novels are awesome. Moving on. The next book. Okay, actually the next books I had to read for class. So two of them were chosen, and the one that I'm about to show you was a required reading. So this book is called Res Dogs by Joseph Brukock. Also, I forgot, this is by Tui T. Sutherland. Um, this is by Joseph Brukock, and this was interesting. It is written in verse. I don't read a lot of books written in verse. It's about the pandemic. So maybe a little too soon, but I had to read it anyway. It's about this young girl. She has to go live with her grandparents on the Wabanaki Indian Reservation in Northern New York. And it's just really interesting. It touches on a lot of things like how um, reservations were left out of a lot of important information with like COVID and like stuff with the virus. Like they just weren't really told and they were kind of just forgotten. And that touched on this really well. It also brought up some racist stuff as well. So blacks and um, even the Asian kind of racist stuff that was happening in a very kid friendly way. This was really good. Um, a lot of heavy topics, but it was done well and it was done in verse. I don't really love that it was written in verse. It kind of made it confusing for me for some reason, but anyway, I gave this four stars, three and a half ish. Um, and this one, sorry, I forgot. This one was five stars for me. If I didn't make myself pretty much clear on that one. Okay. The next book that I read was Princess Academy by Shannon Hale. I gave this three stars. Apparently I've read this before. This was written in 2007. I read this as a kid. I was going to put this on my Goodreads as my currently reading. And I had already marked it as read apparently. And I didn't, I didn't hate it, but I didn't love it. Shannon Hale is actually one of my favorite authors. I absolutely love her, but this one just didn't, kind of found it a little too boring for me. It's about this girl named Miri who lives on a mountain village where they pretty much, she works in a, well, she doesn't work, but all the mountain people work in a quarry and they are mining Lin, Lindor, Lin, Lin, Lindo, Linden? I don't know, they mine some type of stone and there are these priests in the lowlands where the kingdom is and they pronounce that the next princess is going to be coming from this little town on the mountain. So they set up a princess academy in the mountains so that the girls can learn how to become a princess and kind of compete with each other to become the like academy princess and then hopefully win the princess heart. But it just kind of fell short for me. It, it maybe because it was just it this is really good for ages like five to eight, 
5 to 12 maybe. So maybe the fact that it was just like really young, it might have been better for that age range than what it was for me. I just kind of got tired with it. But it, it was pretty good. There is a cute little tiny-ish romance in it. Not really, but kind of. I don't really have much to say on this. It just kind of fell flat for me. I'm sad. <sighs> okay, sorry. This is taking forever. But we're on the last book now, guys. Which is actually a really good one. And that is Aru Shaw and the End of Time. I really liked this book. It took me by surprise. Um, I gave it four stars. It is the first of... Oh, I think they're still coming out. It's a series. I think it reminds me of The Lightning Thief or like Percy Jackson. I've never read Percy Jackson, so I can't really say. But I think that's what it reminds me of. It is full of Indian mythology. It's about this girl who lives with her mom and her mom is a curator of the Indian... Oh shoot, I gotta remember what it's called. The Museum of Ancient Indian Art and Culture. And there's this cursed lamp. When I read that, I was like, oh, is this an Aladdin retelling? It's not. <laughs> but there's a cursed lamp and the daughter lights it even though she's supposed to never touch it or go near it or anything. And she releases this shadow in this person called the sleeper. And basically he is freezing time everywhere that he goes and she and another girl are supposed to kind of stop it. They are technically children of the gods or like siblings. And they kind of go to the other world and are traveling through dimensions to try and defeat the sleeper. So they walk through the, the kingdom of death and certain stuff like that. And so it was actually, it was really full of adventure. It was really fun. And I very much enjoyed this. So I might have to pick up the next couple in the series eventually. This was, this was a lot of fun. I actually really liked it. And it was a super, super, super quick and easy read, which I really loved. So that was that book. You guys, my throat hurts from like talking so much. I've talked so much. Yay. Those are all the books I read in September. So many. And it was awesome. I'm so proud of September. I didn't want to keep, put, like, I didn't want to put any books down. And that's not even counting all the like books that I read like I, there's six more that I'm looking at that are actual like children's books so I've got like three board books and then like a couple picture books um I'm not going to show those I did show those in a video that I posted recently of like a library haul so if you want to read that or watch that you can check it out if you'd like to follow me on other things don't forget to subscribe here but also you can find me on Instagram Twitter I don't use it and Goodreads those will all be linked down below and that's pretty much it what was the best book you guys read in September? Let me know what you were reading. What were your thoughts on it? What did you rate it? I'd love to know. Anyway, have a fantastic week and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.